cool. You ready? Yeah, absolutely. You're ready? I am. Ah! Okay, are we good? Welcome back to the only official exit interview show for Greenhouse 6. We are joined by our first juror of the season. Matt, congratulations on making jury. Hey, I'll take it, especially for the, the ride I had throughout this. Yeah, let's talk about it. Uh, first, I want to hear, how did you get here? Yeah, so last night at about 1.30 in the morning, I got a message from Taylor to say, hey, can you make it to this game? I packed up the car an hour later. I was driving from Houston, Texas, all the way here, and I got here about 30 minutes before the game began. Got a cup of coffee, lovely place, and just hit the ground running and kept going and going. And I'm still feeling it. I haven't slept for about 48 hours, but that's fine. We're, we're making it work. Well, unfortunately, you'll have plenty of time to sleep as you await the rest of the game play out. Yes. I want to ask, do you have experience playing in uh, games like this? Do you think I do? I think you do. Okay. And I want to. I want you to expand on um, what you've learned from other experiences that you mm -hmm. wanted to bring in when you were playing Greenhouse. Yeah. So I played Michigan Mole. Uh, I got to final day, got to sixth place. I played Man Manor. I've done Sequester Access. Uh, I've. Damn. <laughs> I did a Survivor game up in Columbus. So I'm actually someone who's had quite a few allergies. And I played two different games with Johnny before. Uh, so that was kind of going into this game. He was someone that I knew very well and I, I knew coming into this. And we've been keeping that on the down low for everything. I also uh, saw a couple of these faces before just from everything outside of this. I mean, I've... I've done a lot of... I've hosted games as well, so I've been in the production seat. Oh, you got uh, the record. Both yeah. from the Michigan Mole side, from helping out with Ascendance before, and a couple of them. I've gone through a whole bunch of games to, to help out. So I've seen from the production perspective. I guess that's a, a little bit of everything. So. Do you think that was helpful coming into this one? And how is Greenhouse different than your other experiences? Yeah, I think it was very helpful to be able to see and adapt to a game like this that has so many moving parts. So you have three main core mechanics in this game with the flowers that are able to change the conversation in a whim. Unfortunately, I never got a flower in my hand, so I never got to be able to use those mechanics to my own uh, being. But if you're the person that has the tulip, you should be able to put a lot more pressure on people to be able to manipulate votes, which I haven't saw a lot this game. If you're the one with the sunflower, you should be able to help control who goes on the block more. If you're the person with the rose, I was surprised to see not a lot of upset nominations that you could be able to almost create an artificial black door from. There's a lot of ways to maneuver in a game like this that's super interesting. And... I think that in a game like this, from what I've seen from others, every single round has the potential to be completely different just because of those mm -hmm. three small mechanics. Yeah, I completely agree. And something you said about um, the interesting play around some of that, I do think this is a, a season where the Tulip is a very passive role. Mm -hmm. Passive but protected role. Uh, was there any strategy when you were looking at which flower, if you would have got in the greenhouse, which one you'd go for? Oh, I was mean, the no, I was going to go Sunflower. I was 100% guns a-blazing. It's going to put up uh, anybody who put me up before. I am someone that thought Oscar needed to go four rounds ago because I think that in his case, he plays in the middle of the ground way too much. So everyone there is setting themselves up for failure uh, when they're putting all of their chips into someone who's flip-flopping around. Mm -hmm. I don't really have time for that in this kind of game. And I also see people who put me up on, on the block. I have no problem putting them back up on the block and say, flat out, you weren't there to help me out. This last vote, I knew I was gone. I knew immediately when the tulip was played because it blocked the two people who would have voted to save me naturally of Johnny and uh, Josh. And it was because they didn't want their blood on their hands. And when you're going into it, it was a complete jury management move. Mm -hmm. They wanted the tulip played on them, so they can't say they voted against me. So when it comes to my turn for them, they can pitch that I have to vote for them because they didn't go against me. But I have a feeling that's not, as a juror, that's not how you're going to be. <laughs> of course not. And, uh, right. How, I love. How I view the jury in this realm is, how did you take the game from a micro perspective? What are three instances that you could point to to say, I challenged the game in a new way and got away with it. And what did I take from that that defined me as a player? 
And that's what I'm looking for for this. And I think there's some players that have that, and I think there's a lot of players who don't right now. I think that's completely fair. Something I want to talk about before we get to our hot takes that I want to mm -hmm. ask you. Something I saw a lot with you is you have the ability to maneuver with your speaking. I, I, there were, I was in several rooms where people said, I can't speak like him. Um, something I thought was really interesting was you were nominated several times and then avoided the block and came back around. Um, but I still, I'd see you in certain rooms and it would get quiet if you walked in or I'd see you passively to my perspective, walking around. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like after those first couple rounds on the block, um, a wall was created or did you find difficulty there on how to adjust or pivot your gameplay? I was fighting an uphill battle with a lot of that. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of already built in groupings of people for this game. Uh, I think for my particular case is as soon as they found out that I, I could talk my way out of it where I, I pitched, here's what's going on. I'm going to target these two people. If I come into power, people knew I was where my head's at. And I think for this game in particular, I played a very straightforward game. So they weren't, they saw me as the enemy that they knew where I was going to be at. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it came to something like that, I was unapologetic that if you gave me information and you screwed me over, I was giving that information up. I gave the information yeah. up for Zach. Uh, when they were playing with the numbers, I made sure to point out that there's only a certain amount of votes before you are able to get to where they're at now. And I think that that same thing of how... I feel like certain players right now are struggling to get the pacing of this game. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to actually act on that information. And something from my end is, if I can fight it, I will keep fighting on and on. I will make sure that if there is a logic behind everything for my moves, I will explain it best I can. And I think for a lot of the players here, they were playing based on... There was either players who played on emotion or players who played how to survive one round. I was playing on how do I set the game up to get to the end, or how do I set the game up to eliminate the people who are going to steamroll the game? Mm -hmm. And it's starting potentially. Mm -hmm. I want to. I actually. I want to say one more thing before we get into the hot takes. Um, something I thought was really interesting was the round you were up against Blythe and Alex, mm -hmm. who, from a, a wider perspective or a more zoomed out perspective, such as mine, watching you guys play, they were not necessarily at odds. But you had pulled Alex into a room and said one on one. Do we take this opportunity? And you planted the seed, I think, for that downfall of uh, essentially Blythe and Alex, yep. which led to the first blind side of the season. So I want to give you your flowers there because oh, I don't know that everyone knows that that's something that happened. And I really think you played a big role in uh, why you made it so far. And that, that move in particular, what I had to do is everyone always says, oh, let's point the fingers for stuff. And I, I want to give someone... If I can make an opportunity happen, someone is more likely to act on an opportunity than to just go on a, a campaign trail against someone else. And I offered to both of them, how are we able to put a big impact on the move? And where I actually got traction was with Blythe. I just pulled her aside and I said, hey, I need one chip. Do you want to pull I heard about that later, but she did give you one. Interesting, because she was the other person on the block. I got her to give me a chip so I could bid so I then had the max bid. She, I was using her own ship where she had to outbid her own self to be able to manipulate the block. But by doing that, it forced all of the nominees to overact and overreact mm -hmm. to everything. So then I became the person who was the voice of reason in that conversation. I'm the one that said, hey, I have my three ships. This is all I have for it. I paid back my, my debts immediately. We moved on. But what I think was important from that is that Blythe felt like I owed her Mm -hmm. And I made sure to capitalize on it and say, hey, we're here for it. Had, I think, Blythe stayed that last round and Zach left, which was a, a fool's errand for me to be able to accomplish, that last round I probably could have dominated. Mm -hmm. Because the problem with it is that once you start picking away those personalities, I'm a pretty outspoken person for it. So they knew if they came at yeah. me, I would, I'd immediately either shut it down or bring it up. Yeah. Well, that brings us to some hot takes. Oh, let's do it. A little fun and get a little messy. Um, and I want you to keep it quick-ish. Yeah, well, but feel we'll free to lay into the, the the people if they need to be laid into. Uh, let's start with who's the most under the radar. Most under the radar, I would have to give to Johnny. Uh, I think that in this game, 
Johnny has set himself up that I don't think he's going to get nominated at all. Okay. I think he's making it to Final Four, and it's because every single person thinks that he's an asset. I gave him my chip before I left. I, I know that he has a, a chance to be able to sprint to the end of this game, and I think that in his own world, he is a ghost to people because they think that he's always going to be a good voice of reason for whatever mm -hmm. plan they're going into. Mm -hmm. He somehow has three different trios talking to him. Which is crazy. Let's talk about who's the biggest snake. <laughs> so, she was sitting on the block right beside me just a few moments ago. She, anytime I would have a conversation, <laughs> there was plenty of footage in this game where I would talk to someone and she would go down the list and say, oh, I have a good conversation with you, good conversation with you. She'd look at me and then she'd move on to someone else <laughs> midway through conversation because she never wanted to admit we had a good conversation because she always wanted me as a backdoor option or mm. a backup plan. And it all came to a front from this last round when Emily stuck her neck out for me and essentially war was declared because of this. She, she's not going to... One, she won't win the game. She's not going to make it that far because she's already too explosive. I think she's going to be the next person walking in here. Which actually is one of my questions. Yeah. So Emily, you think is the next boot? No. Uh, oh, sorry. Zakai. I think Zakai. Zakai's next Sorry, boot. my bad. If... <laughs> yeah, I'm Emily so is sorry, in Emily. here. I'm so sorry, Emily. Fight on, girl. Yeah. Um, okay, another question I have for you is who is kissing the most ass? Oh, I mean, that's easy. I'm losing my mind right now. Name them. Yeah? Name them. Oscar. 100%. 1,000%. Huh? It's Oscar. Well, he has never done a move in this game that hasn't been in the middle of the pack that is just convenient for him to hide behind the numbers. Even when he put me up on the block, I worked with him. We had chip exchange. He gave you a chip. That, yeah. But I gave back that chip. I could have kept it back in right. my pocket. And what he did is put me back on the block because he wanted the easy one of me being in back-to-back -back eliminations because that mm -hmm. was the easy move. Anything he's ever done, he even backed up on this one. He had enough votes. Josh had my other vote. There was enough votes that we could have tipped it the other way, but he wants to hide in the shadows too much that when I look at a resume, I, I see a blank tablet of stone on the gravestone from him. I don't actually see someone who's played the game right now, and I am very interested to see what moves that he can point that say, I did this from start to finish. Okay, love it. Um, my next and last question of the hot takes is, who's your winner pick? Winner pick, realistically, I think it's Johnny. I think Johnny's winning the game. Uh, he has set himself up for success too well to, to not make, make his way to the end. I would love to see Emily uh, do it. She has grown probably the most out of any player who's played from this from start to finish. Uh, she's had her ups and downs, but what she did really good last round is she went up to bat, defended herself, and also set up plans to put in everyone's ears mm -hmm. that she's not just there to sit by anymore. She's going on the offensive, and I think that's awesome. Love that. And to wrap up our time here, mm -hmm. I want to hear what was your biggest mistake? Oh, so biggest mistake. I think a lot of them is just not winning. I mean, not winning flowers is probably a big one. For that last one that was all about uh, bidding, I had the math done correctly. I just for the last minute, bid at 11 instead of 12, I would have had the, the tulip. And I had it on my paper, and I had the correct number because I knew and I heard, I can read people's lips. So I saw people write, murmuring things. I saw the 11, but I also saw them say 10. So I'm like, all right, we're going to do 11. Mm -hmm. I messed one thing up right there, and it, it changed the, the course of the game for me because I, I second-guessed myself. And it happens in other games. When you second-guess yourself, when I played Mole, second-guess myself one time, that's all it takes to get out of the game. You second yourself in this, it's gone too. That's all it takes. Well, I'm super excited to see you again when we do a jury round table. Okay. And then, of course, you will be voting for the winner. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Matt, for playing. You did a great job, and I'm excited to see how this all plays out. Absolutely. Me too. I'm, I'm ready to see how this back half of this game is going to play. All right. Bye, y'all. Bye.